things that I wouldn't, I wish it didn't happen. Losing my baseball career, being crippled, going through some really hard uh, surgeries and having the cancer. And also, I wished I wouldn't have had a divorce. You know, I have marks, wounds, and scars. God's not worried about this. What, what, what did I do with them? See, if people don't give up all the anger and unforgiveness and resentment and hostility, it'll turn into bitterness, and, not, and bitterness will make you sick, literally. So those are the issues. But again, I can't think about what could have been. I don't, I don't want to go back there anymore. This is how it is. This is what I'm doing. And uh, I, go, I go to minister where people won't go or don't care about it. And these are, in Skid Row, there's people laying on the street. At one time, they were a baby that a mother held. They have feelings. They want to be loved. They, a lot of them don't want to be addicted. And this is where God put me. But look what I had to go through for me to understand. So he always has a plan and purpose. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 and Psalm 32, 8. He says, Mel, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you go. I will guide you with my eye. This is what he did. That was never a plan. He'd have told me all those years ago, oh, Mel, you're going to be a Skid Row prison minister. I'd say, who is this guy? Are you kidding me? But you know what? It's, it's the best thing I ever did. All the movies, all the accolades, all that other stuff. When you see a human being, it's like I took my daughter to get f tires at Firestone. And then the manager was a black guy and he came over to me and he said, can I talk to you? I said, sure. He says, you don't remember me, do you? And I says, no, I'm sorry, I don't. He said, I lost my wife my home, my business, to cocaine. I was sitting on a curb at the Fred Jordan Mission. And he says, you came out there and you say, hey, bro, you need to come in here and hear some of that encouraging word. He says, I sat there saying, I can't believe I'm on Skid Row. I can't believe. He came in and gave his life to the Lord. He's been clean from cocaine. He got that really good job as a manager, back together with his wife. They have their own place. See? Everybody's not going to get free, freedom and liberation, but there are so many to do. Uh, I was with my daughter, Leah, and had a little grandkid. And we, I took, she was down here, took her to the pancake house. And as we're walking down, she said to me, Tata, there's four gangbangers following us. I said, get behind me. So I stood back there, and one of them said, hey, chaplain, it's me, Hector. He said, I wanted you to meet my cousins. We're all doing the arsenal prayer. It was hilarious. And my daughter just, she says, no matter where I go, somebody knows you. And that that's, that's what makes you feel good. People can change and get turned around. I was at Applebee's with this gal sitting out there and, and this, this young, looked like a gangbreaker, he dressed real nice. He said, can I talk to you? I said, sure. He says, you led me to the Lord in there. You gave me that arsenal prayer and you encouraged me. So I, this is my wife and two kids, little kids. He said, I'm totally clean. We're back together. It, it was like incredible. And she, she was crying. She came and hugged me. That's why I will continue to go. There's always someone who needs an encouraging word, who needs to be healed, restored. And that's what I do. Even in these movies. I led two of the directors to the Lord in, the, in these five movies. Uh, and Wardrobe Girl, uh, 
makeup girl. And some kid, he was an extra. He was an extra in the Syndicate Smasher. And I had one more scene to do and I finished with the whole movie. So I was sitting there like tired. He comes over, he goes, oh, it's an honor to meet you. I said, don't bow. No bowing to me. And he, so finally he says, do you have any tips for an actor? I says, yeah, Matthew 6, 33. He says, what? I says, put God first. And uh, I ended up helping him. And then after a month, he had no food or anything. Guy says, look, you need to go back home, save money for nine months of rent, food and everything. I, I, I bought him a bus ticket. Gave him money for food. People think, oh, I could be a star. I had a guy in the penitentiary, a real tough dude. He had like four front teeth missing. He says, hi, how could I be a movie star? And I was thinking, oh, man. First thing you got to do is get out of here, bro. Why do you want to be a star? Why don't you just be an actor? I want success and prosperity. I said, that's Joshua 1.8. But you got to follow God daily and constantly in his word and let him do what he does best, success and prosperity will follow. He goes, oh, amazing. You're in the penitentiary. You want to know how you can be a movie star? <laughs>